welcome. This is Melissa Armo with a stock swoosh and reviewing the stock swoosh show live trading room. This is advanced trader tracking 2020 results from January, February, March, and up through April 29th. So up and through today, we'll see really where we go with this. I mean, it's been a great year. Uh, I've been very, very active this year. Uh, options, day trades, I don't know why, other than the fact that the volatility has been there, the trades have been there, the setups have been there. And we've really hit it hard. So I, I think that this is one of these things where you're doing something for a really long time and you just get better at it as time goes on. And I started trading in 2008. It's 2020. So it's, you know, into 12th, 12th year here. Uh, and uh, really, really happy with what I've accomplished so far this year. So 403, 596 year to date. This is the day trades. This isn't the options. This is just the day trades. So we're going to go over everything here. If you have any questions, email me at 929 or uh, email me at melissa at thestockswoosh.com or call me at 929-3200-GAP. And you can follow me on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, or Skype. I post a lot of videos on, on YouTube. That's probably the best place to follow me. Right now, it's earning season. So it is a very good time to trade. It's been a, it's been a wild earning season. Just in the week and a half, to almost into the first two weeks here of earning season, it continues into the end of May. So there's... There's first quarter, second quarter, third quarter, and fourth quarter earnings season. That's the best time to trade because stocks have the most moves when they have earnings. And obviously, if you're an active trader, you can make more money when stocks have bigger moves. They have momentum, volume, and volatility. You started off pretty good in January, took a few days off. And again, earnings season started off in the middle, uh, towards the end of January for, uh, for the first quarter. And it's really, really interesting because looking back, and we're seeing some of the bullish trades we did versus the bearish trades I did at the early in the year 2020, market was very bullish to start off the year. We did do a lot of shorts. There were nice short plays, but I did more bullish long trades in the trading room earlier in the year than we've been doing right now. We've done no shorts really recently. But for those of you that don't know, I prefer to short. The class I teach once a month is the Golden Gap short class. Uh, the bullish class I only usually teach once or twice a year. So looking back on how the year started out, there were there were bullish trades, um, and there were very uh, very few bullish trades. In fact, I can't even think of the last long we did in the month whole month here of April. But I do prefer to short. Why? Short moves, fast moves, selling panic comes in quicker. So I like to do the short moves because the shorts go faster. That's pretty much the only reason. But just looking at all these here, lots and lots of longs were in the earlier in the year, in January and February too. And in fact, we did a lot of longs in the market earlier in the year. BYND, we had a lot of longs in that, remembering that as well here now. Uh, Twitter, we ended up doing uh, today. Twitter back, this was in March. That was the last time we had done Twitter, I think. Boeing has been a big stock for the year. That's been a short when we've been doing it. It's been a short every time we've done it. That was a big deal there on March 11th. It just Boeing really has been one of the best shorts we've had this year. CCL too, done that a bunch of times, that's been a short. But again, we've done many, 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 many longs. Another Boeing. And then there were a couple of days in here where there weren't any trades that set up right. Uh, this was towards the period, remember, when everything went crazy with COVID-19 and the market was getting halted every day. So we took it easy that week. And then we got right back to it again, CCL. You gotta get back on that top of that one. JPM was a nice one. Um, another great, great trade in Boeing to start out the month of April. And just, gosh, we we're doing Boeing so much. Boeing, Boeing, Boeing. It's really funny that I'm looking at this. And again, April, we've done a lot of shorts. March, we did a lot of shorts. There's another Boeing. Um, and the Qs, yeah. And the Spy, and another Boeing. And ACAM was the really, really nice one yesterday. So this week was just a home run with the fast trades right out of the gate. UPS was a good one on Tuesday. And we'll see what um, May brings. First day of May is going to be very interesting because it's a Friday going into a weekend. Nice trade there in the SPY on the 23rd. Anyways, most of the risk is about an average of 2500 per trade, risk per trade, okay? Now, you don't have to risk that. You can trade with a small account, risk $100, $200 per trade if you want to. I never know until I see the setup live, when I'm calling the trades in the room, where the entry and the stop is going to be. I have an idea. But if I say 10 by 50, that's 50 cents, for example. So then you have to size yourself according to your risk. If you take 1,000 shares, it's $500. If you take 2,000 shares, it's $1,000. So everyone's risk should be based on the size of their cash account. If you have questions about that, you can ask me. But 
you definitely can trade with a beginner risk. You can build up your account slowly, slowly over time. And just for those of you that don't understand margin and buying power, it, it, your, your, your risk should be based on the size of your cash account. Your buying power, especially if you have a proprietary day trading account, you may have 10 to 1 leverage, okay? So you can open up a prop account with $2,500 and have 10 to 1 leverage, and, and you could open up one with 5,000 and have 10 to 1 leverage and have 50,000 in buying power. But again, your risk still has to be based on, per trade, the cash in your account, which if it's 5,000, it's 5,000. So it really depends on one, what is your margin? Two, what is your cash size of your account? And again, how good are you? And I really think if once you do the class, you can start out small, gain your confidence, be green, green, green. That's what you need, that's what helps. You can grow a small account into a larger account. But if you have the money to trade and risk $2,500 a trade, you can go for it. But you gotta learn the system, you gotta learn what I do. It's a prerequisite for joining the room to get all these trade calls. If you wanna trade for yourself and work for yourself, you can do it. It's a function of learning, conviction. I was discussing this in the room today, specifically in my call in the market today, and Twitter as well. So the class is called the Golden Gap Course. It is a class where I teach my system. Class for May is May 2nd and 3rd. Class tuition is $69.99. Class is online. You can be anywhere in the world and take it. Email me if you want to sign up. The combo is the Trends and the Golden Gap Course. Combo is May 5th. It's $74.99. Class is online. Again, you can be anywhere in the world and take it. It's been a great, great start to 2020. If you do not have a strategy that works, if you do not have a system that works, then you've got to learn one. You cannot trade this market without a mentor, without a system, and without conviction and confidence. At least not if you wanna make a lot of money, and specifically if you wanna stay green, green, green. Markets are volatile. Expect the volatility to continue probably into the end of the summer and possibly into the end of the year. Have a great day, everyone. If you're interested in the Golden Gap course, email me and Melissa at thestockswoosh.com.